Israeli firm introduces armed combat drone to patrol borders this afternoon. We're happy to have with us on the prof, uh, on the program Professor Noel Sharkey, uh, who speaks to us live from the United Kingdom. Professor Noel, good day, greetings, and welcome to the program on Radio Islam International. Hello, I'm very pleased to be on your show. Thank you for joining us. At the outset, we'd like to get your thoughts on the developments that have come about. State-owned Israeli aerospace industry on Monday unveiled a remote-controlled arm robot drone, it says, can patrol battle zones. Tell us uh, you know, about this and how will it work? Well, it's essentially a, like a little tank, uh, not too little. You can, it's a bit, you can carry a person on board, like on a stretcher. But the um, Israelis have been doing this since 2010. Um, they had a, a guard, Guardian uh, robot car that they claimed at the time could travel autonomously around the border and shoot autonomously as well. Uh, but because of international worries about the idea of a machine shooting people on its own, making its own decisions on who to kill, uh, they changed that narrative. And now they say the new weapons are remote controlled. This particular one, though, can drive itself like a self-driving car. Um, it has other autonomous functions as well for collecting data. Uh, but the head of the operations of, of the company said that it was capable of firing autonomously, so shooting people autonomously, but they weren't mature enough to be used for that yet. So that, so that is the question then in terms of, uh, you know, it, yes. Uh, firing autonomously, uh, will it be able to distinguish between combatants and civilians uh, to make the uh, proper call about, you know, uh, who it uh, shoots at? I don't believe so, no. Um, not any time soon. Well, in fact, it's not just a matter of, of, of saying this person's a, a soldier, this person's a civilian. Much of the much of the, the people that they're fighting with are ununiformed combatants, and that's impossible to tell which ones are civilians and which ones are combatants unless they fire a weapon at you. Um, so that's going to be very difficult. And also, it's not contextually sensitive, or computers really don't have the ability to apply the principle of proportionality. That is deciding on what's proportional killing. That's done by a uh, sometimes very badly, but done by human command, uh, commanders. It's what you call a qualitative decision. You can't make it into an algorithm and put it on a computer. So it's it's a hard, it's a very difficult thing to do. Yes. And then what about the possibility of malfunctioning and then just shooting indiscriminately? Is that a possibility? That's always a possibility with any machine. Um, but, you know, these are very well-made machines. One of the problems is, well, they're being copied all over the place. And, and you know, anybody can use them. You can buy off-the-shelf machines that you could put weapons on. Uh, there's, there's a video from, what, about nine years ago of a boy in the United States flying a remote control little helicopter, and it's got a machine gun on it firing at a tree. So other people can use these. They can be developed by all sorts of people. I've always said since right at the beginning when I started campaigning against this in 2007, that these things could be copied by many people. And, you know, poor copies can break down. They can fire anybody. They can be very indiscriminate. You could, for instance, take a, a, a flying drone, as I believe that IS has done, and load them with explosives small pack of explosives and send them off and when the battery runs out they fall on the ground and kill people so that's a kind of autonomy in a sense yes and then what about the possibility of it being hacked well any machine can be hacked um <laughs> i can tell you that for sure as a computer scientist um what we say in the business is um any, every machine is secure until it's been hacked so that's a possibility. And and there's there's other things that can happen without a machine being hacked. With an autonomous weapon system, you could trick it. You can fool them much more easily than you can a human. I mean, for instance, the self-car, the self-drive car 
uh, cars you've heard around in uh, America, like Google Car and Tesla, can easily be fooled by people who very clever people who know how to fool them. You can put some dots on a road sign, for instance, and uh, the road sign might say stop. But to the car, these little dots mean it says turn left. And so it will turn left. You can put dots on a road so that the car crosses to the other side of the road. And one of the things about warfare or armed conflict in general is that people try to deceive each other. That's one of the biggest components of warfare is deception. And I think these things are much more easier, easy to deceive than humans would be in so many ways. And so I think that using them will just you know, build up collateral damage and I don't like that term, actually, it will end up with killing an awful lot of civilians. And that's my biggest concern. In terms of the functionality of these, uh, uh, you know, the, the this particular robotic thing, uh, that uh, uh, will it be able to decipher terrain? Uh, will it be able to, you know, just say there's holes in the road? Will it know exactly how much force to apply to overcome that uh, uh, a physical obstacle? Or will it just drive down trees, et cetera, willy-nilly? Well, it's got very big, heavy wheels, so it'll be able to beat a small hole. But this is one of the problems for any self-driving cars. Uh, we've seen the the Google, the, sorry, the Tesla. No, it was, oh, I know. It was an Uber taxi a couple of years ago that thought that a woman crossing the road with a bicycle was a plastic bag blowing in the wind. So they're not perfect by any means. So the, there are a lot of problems with them. And so it'd be quite easy to trap them. You could you could dig a hole in the road, cover it with something, and the car would never suspect anything and just drive into the hole. So they're, they're, they're not that good. But that's one of the reasons why they're, um, say, they're remote control. And even if it's self-drive and driving autonomously, there's lots of cameras and sensors on this device, and it's controlled by something like an iPad. So it's a tablet computer. And so a soldier will be looking, uh, well, somebody from the armed forces will be looking through the cameras, looking at the sensors and detecting things. So they will be able to correct it if it goes wrong. You spoke in the, at the outset about, you know, Israel holding back for a while because of international law. And now we find them at the stage where they are in using this. What does international source law say about the, this type of drone warfare? Is there any ruling controlling drone usage by uh, militaries? Should it be banned? What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, at the moment, there's no spe there's no specific law about using autonomous weapons or remote control drones or any of those weapons. We just have to rely on the traditional laws of war that any weapon must show disc be discriminate. So you can't kill too many civilians uh, if you're killing, taking out a military target. But I can tell you that as far as I know, only about one person has ever been prosecuted for disproportionate attacks. So it's it's not not really that great. Uh, my view is that we need very specific new laws for these weapons, because with a new law, you create international focus. So people will break the law. Of course, people will develop all sorts of things, but people can break the law with chemical weapons. They can use gas and warfare, etc. But then they have the whole international community coming down on them and contending them. So my belief is that we need new laws. And I've been working at the UN now since 2014 with the campaign to stop killer robots. And we've been trying to get a, a, pro, a new prohibitive treaty on the use of these weapons. And many nation states have been joining us, including South Africa, which where I believe I'm, I'm speaking to now. Uh, they mm. have joined looking, they're asking for a new prohib, uh, treaty to prohibit the use of these weapons by international law. They joined us uh, this year for the first time. Uh, China is even behind it, although they're continuing to develop them, they said, until such a treaty is developed. We have 36 nations, um, lots of Islamic nations like uh, Pakistan, Iraq, Iran, those nations, um, even um, Palestine, uh, very vocal on the issue. So, they, so we have uh, quite a lot of support. And this year as well, the International Committee for the Red Cross 
uh, the preservers of the laws of war have come out and said they're supporting a prohibition of these weapons. They too believe there should be new law. The Secretary General of the United Nations has called for new law on these weapons. But we have countries, just a very small number of countries who are blocking this at the UN when we go there. That's the United States, of course, who are developing them. Israel, Australia, the United Kingdom aren't terribly helpful either. So. Um, those are the main, and Russia, of course, so those are the main blockers for a new treaty. Yes, but, you know, as things are unfolding, do you see that this is the future of warfare? Or will others start following suit and use these unmanned war machines? They're spreading quite quickly. One of the biggest dangers is proliferation. We're seeing the beginning of a new arms race. The United States started this in the early 2000s. They were writing about it in all their public reports, what they call the road military roadmaps from about 2004. And of course, you know, some of that was just saber rattling. They weren't really developing them at that time. They are now. But other countries read this and, of course, it got them up and they started running them as well. So we're already seeing lots of countries developing them. And it's it's of great concern. Will they be in will future wars be run by these weapons? I really hope not. If I have my say, they will not, because it's much more dangerous than you can imagine. It's not just about discrimination and those laws of war. But the whole object they're, they're get, trying to get across is that war is becoming much too fast for human reasoning. And that cannot be a good thing. Humans have always got to be there reasoning. And what's happening is you're developing faster and faster weapons and then developing faster counter weapons to the point where wars could come and go in, in 20 minutes before they even, we even realized they'd started. And that could be a future if we don't stop this now. Certainly, uh, we should uh, you know do all with uh, in our capacity, and that's where the role that you playing, uh, Professor Noel, is uh, such an important one. Thank you for enlightening us on the issue. Thank you for listening. Go well. Bye bye. Bye.